Hello, y'all. I don't know what happened. Some technical difficulties. Apologies. We were just getting into the goody goody stuff, but um, technology. <laughs> uh, damn. Uh, but we'll wait for Josen to join us back. Thank you all so much for your love and patience with us as we navigate through these uh, technical difficulties. And here comes Josen. Start again. There you go. Hello, hello. Back. We're back in. We're back in it. Uh, thank you so much, y'all, for being patient with us and coming through. Uh, who knows what happens, but hey, life is unexpected. And what we do, we move, we move on and we do the best we can, right? We make a movie about it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So, Justin, um, yeah. Oh, man, you were uh, in the middle of such a, you know, profound answer about your journey. <laughs> you talked about, you know, you talked to us about, you know, how you were interested in, in skating and, you know, and can you, you know, take it from there as well in, ter in terms of like your, your journey becoming a, a, an artist? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's definitely such a, I guess, as you call it, a profound journey. Um, starting starting from skateboarding, you know, I think like ultimately like it was too scary and I was not good enough to be, you know, a skater. So instead, um, I picked up a camera from like my parents' closet, a little handy cam video camera. And instead, you know, I I filmed my friends doing their cool tricks like above, you know, above stairs, we would like go around and to like different skate spots um every week and i would just like instead of joining them like i would film them and then one of my friends was trying to go pro and then he was like he wanted me to help like create his like pro reel and i think that was like very much a step one into the journey of like my artistry and filmmaking i think like an like another step into that was like I think like photography was just super cool. I had like a couple friends who like were super, super cool professional photographers who were like way older than me. So then like, I think there was a certain time where I was like, even though I knew I had no money to buy a camera, I was like, hey, like tell me about um, your photography and what do you do? Cause like, I think like this was an old friend that I didn't like keep in contact with for a while. And then I somehow stumbled upon his like, Flickr, Tumblr, Instagram, one of those. And I just like messaged him. Uh, and then he was very like supportive of just like, this is, well, he just answered my annoying questions essentially. Um, but I think, from, <laughs> you know, I think from that, like just, um, I think that I like, I can go on and on. Like, um, like these were just like hobbies and things I was interested in because I was, you know, I was able to, I had the privilege to like dabble into all these things. And then I think later on, what really like solidified it was like, when my sibling in chat said, Hernandez Ronquillo, um, they went to the UCLA film school, and then they were able to bring all these resources over while I was in high school, like they had super cool cameras brought over from school and like editing system. And just like, seeing all these things were like super interesting to me um although it was not something that i was thinking would be ultimately be a career um it kind of led to that because of their you know support into bringing me firstly this is like a super not non-linear um answer but i think <laughs> a, a lot of it was also through like the community work i was doing as well like i want to shout out um you know, um, uh, organization here in Los Angeles called Uplift Los Angeles, who is an um, immigrant rights organization, le youth led um, API immigrant rights organization here in Los Angeles. Um, and then from there, I was able to like, really delve deep into like all the other community work. Like I did um, this uh, program called Summer Activist Training here in Los Angeles that um, where I met like super amazing people um which led me to um doing volunteer work at Tuesday Night Project another amazing organization arts organization here in Los Angeles specifically Little Tokyo you know that champ that champions you know building art and community 
communities within, you know, Little Tokyo, within um, the Asian American um, diaspora. Um, and then from there, from Tuesday Night Project, from Tuesday Night Cafe, um, starting to work at Visual Communications Media, VC Media, shout out, I also see VC Media um, in the chat, where like I really, which really like solidified my love for films and filmmaking and storytelling. I think without, you know, I think without, oh, Isil, without the <laughs> mentorship from uh, Isil, from without the mentorship from Francis, you know, it's like, I don't think I would have really d like delved deep into what um, filmmaking looked like for me and what storytelling really looked like um, for me in my future. And then I was, I had such a privilege to be working with VC and the uh, Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival for quite a amount of years. Um, and it really made me appreciate the love of like indie filmmaking um, and the love of the community inside um, filmmaking. So yeah, shout out, shout out to VC fam, shout out to TNP fam, shout out to Uplift fam, and shout out to my actual fam who, you know, have supported me and helped me grow through through the through this um really intense life <laughs> shout out to community honestly yeah. community family chosen family y'all are the best uh stepping stones for us to continue moving forward so uh yeah thank you that was uh, you know uh that is your experience reflects a lot of our experiences. I can definitely see myself reflecting your in your your experience, and I saw the comments here and there as well. You know, life is nonlinear. There's you know not a single way to get to a specific place, right? There's all kinds of venues that we have to take in order to get to a place. Now you kind of mentioned this already, but I want to know like what continues to what what continues to motivate you to continue to work because you know um artistry filmmaking storytelling you know how do we balance between i, I guess um you know continue to work on those passion projects and those things that keep us motivated but also having to obviously becoming adults and having to pay all kinds of things right and 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 managing the aspect of finances and artistry how do you manage that and what keeps you motivated to continue moving forward because i know that not 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 all the time we are able to fully dedicate ourselves to being artists. We have to kind of like part our time between certain things, right? So can you tell a little bit more about your experience in that regard? Yeah, um, I think, yeah, ultimately being an artist is so hard. Like I, I am, I'm coming in such like a privileged place that I was, to, I was able to garner so much support and love from, you know, my community uh, being able to, I mean, I think like nonetheless, like it took so many years to be able to reach this point in my life where I'm able to, you know, kind of be stable enough to be working like in the arts, like doing editing work, like in itself while also being involved in the communities that I appreciate so much. Um, I think like I, like it's only been like the past two, three years where I was able to, you know, really financially um, make a life like this possible. Like there was so much, I think for me, there was, I like ultimately there is, I think I have so much love for my community that I am okay with volunteering so much of my time, whether it's after, you know, after having a part-time job, after, you know, going to college for a few years, um, and then just actually like making a community with the people I love and appreciate that support me that has able to, you know, put me in this position. I think I'm like saying the same thing like 20 times, but, oh, oh my goodness. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm seeing a, a, a chat from Madison that I totally forgot to talk about. So I used to work at this restaurant called Buca de Peppo, which is um, an American Italian based restaurant um it's really good food i hope me and my friends can one day celebrate there together um i was a photographer there so like in addition to like you know my my community life i also did work part-time 
and I worked at Buca de Pepo, um, kind of soliciting. <laughs> Unfortunately, I had to be a salesperson, but I had to, I took photos of people and I sold photos for money and commission. And I was able to get, you know, that's how I was able to get money um, back then. But like, I was doing that while I was going to college. Um, and, you know, afterwards, I would have the following day, I would be um, doing community work in Little Tokyo or in here in Los Angeles. Um, so I think like, ultimately, they're like, I'm just super appreciative of the community I have um, that is able to support me. So awesome. Shout out to community. Woo woo. Um, is there, do you have like a philosophy or a motto mm -hmm. for your life or for your arts uh, mm -hmm. that you live by that you mind sharing with us? Oh man, I think like it's really funny. Like I, I am such a go with the flow person that living by. Well, I guess at the end of the day, like you just gotta go with the flow and like you know catch a vibe and like just kind of not force yourself into being into wanting a specific future. I guess like I think it is important to have specific goals in mind. Um, to be able to reach those goals. But I think for me, like, this is something I wasn't planning on, planning to be when I was even like 18 or 19, you know, I think like, I I didn't, I forgot to mention this as well, but I used to go to school for architecture. Um, I dropped out a couple of years later, but, you know, I think like the life, I think, just let life guide you. And just let, you know, kind of don't swim towards swim with the current swim don't don't swim against the current um and go with the flow catch a vibe have fun um but yeah uh that's my motto i guess if if it ever were to be one go with the flow hey you know um <laughs> if, if there was a word that i would describe you based on my experience and the time <laughs> I, i have knowing you it would be vibing <laughs> 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 all about vibing y'all uh, shout out to joseph Woo -hoo. uh you know that's really interesting that you mentioned architecture i have no idea about that actually and that's really interesting because you know um i also when i was little in el salvador i wanted to be an architect because my my uncle was an architect and i was always interested in creating something right and i think the beauty of filmmaking uh is that it allows us to do so many things within one craft or like you know the arts Uh, you can be creating sets, you can be creating, you know, um, visual media, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really awesome. And, and then another thing that popped to my mind when you were sharing your, your initial thoughts about becoming a filmmaker, you said that, you know, you initially wanted to be a, a skate, you know, a skater and everything, but then you kind of use film and cameras to live that experience in a different way. And that really resonates with me because that, that's like the beauty of this art that you can live all these different experiences, you know, maybe not sometimes being directly like, uh, you know, engage with that, but through a different lens. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but <laughs> anyway, so I thought that was really interesting. Um, um, and I just want to do a quick reminder folks to who are in the audience, please, if you have any questions for Josen, uh, please feel free to drop them on the comment section. I know Mario Torres will be uh, keeping an eye on that so that we can engage with that. Um, okay, so I guess we, we can move on with another question. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the projects that you're currently working on or that you have recently completed? Um, and yeah, just let us know a little bit more about your work uh, nowadays. Yeah, thank you. I think this is like a good segue from your last thought as well, because I think like ultimately that's such, that's such like an amazing, the beauty of you know, docu like nonfiction documentary storytelling is like, you can really just pick up a camera and show your interests, whatever it is, whether it's skating, whether it's your um, 20 year old car driving through, you know, the United States. Um, it's like, there's, I think there's so much, so many stories to tell. And I think it can, it, it is only up to us to want to tell those stories. I think like uh, my sibling said, brings this up so much of like how, our mom is like our the true OG filmmaker and documentarian of our family because like she is the one, you know, keeping all these memories, keeping all these archives. Um, 
uh, in for us in the future. But uh, with that being said, um, current work I'm working on right now. Um, there was one I I can share. I think um, I'm currently well. First off, um, I had the privilege of premiering the first um, um, s- scripted fiction. Okay, that's what that's the word. A uh, fiction feature film um, that. Um, premiered at the Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival um, a few months ago in October, and it was so fun. It was a comedy. Um, I am looking forward to the future of that film wherever it gets distributed. Um, super exciting to see that. Um, secondly, I am currently working on two films. I'm working on one um, feature film documentary. Um, about the community um, in Philippines, in um, in Lubang Island, in Look, um, about kind of centering the the stories of the um, Filipino villagers that were there during World War II and afterwards, when a you know when the Japanese brought their soldiers along, and there was one specific soldier named Hiro Onuda who you know refused to surrender and has, you know, terrorized the the city for 30 plus years. And just like hearing the stories of, you know, those, uh, the, the members of, of the community in Lubang Island um, in, 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 the, in that story. Um, also, the second film I am currently working on is so, something else that I can't share too much about, but it is um, a pilot documentary on vegetables and the journey of vegetables. I think that is as much as I can I can share, but mm. that is a super exciting uh, a f- um, film that I am editing as well. So excited for all those things. Damn, that's awesome. Sounds great. Like, I can't wait to see more of your work. Um, and I see a lot of comments on the on the uh, comment section and questions. So I think this will be the perfect time to kind of like segue to the audience questions. Um, I saw one, I know Mario's collecting them right now, but I saw um, one from somebody, I'm sorry y'all, if I don't say who, who's the person who asked the questions, I, I, I cannot see. But it says, what's been your favorite memory doing gigs for your community? Favorite memory doing to engage with in the community? Is that what the question is? Sorry. Uh, what's been your favorite memory doing gigs for your community? Oh, okay, favorite memory. You know, I think like what like I guess the 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 theme word the theme of today's IG live is community, and I think that's like the whole theme of uh, my my life is the support of my community. I think like when I was out of college, like I've been able to like I've had so many great friends who have been able to hire me, um, what like doing event photography, um, which uh, you know was was a big privilege um i think favorite memory that's hard uh i think it definitely has to be i think th- during a certain year of my life i was volunteering a lot for many film festivals doing um photography and i think like the memories of just you know being able to you know go to these specific film festivals to meet so many amazing people so many amazing volunteers and filmmakers is what like is super exciting to see and a positive is you get free tickets to the film festival being able to see all these great amazing indie um indie films so yeah that's that's definitely those are definitely my favorite memories of being able to just work in film festivals no wonder you are the film festival subcommittee leader <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I can yes. see something like the background where you came from. All right, all right. Um, I can't. We we have time for a couple more questions. Uh, I see Rahi. Shout out to Rahi who asked, "What keeps you grounded?" Ooh, thank you for that question, Rahi. I think like yeah, the 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 word of the day, community. I think like whether uh, it's you know new community or old or old community, like that has it's been able to community has been able to keep me grounded both like just like spiritually and emotionally um so it definitely has to be community 
like community has been able to like give me so much abundance in life, whether it's financially or just um, filling my heart with so many great things. Um, so super thankful for my community, whether it's here in Los Angeles, um, in Little Tokyo, or my, um, you know, my immigrant rights community um, through Uplift, or my, you know, national community, undocu community with um, undocumented filmmakers collective. So, yeah. All right. Sounds good. Thank you for that. Um, and we'll do two more questions. I have one from Dorian and one from Set um, as well. Uh, Ms. Dorian says, you're such a badass. <laughs> Ditto to that. Is there a specific type of project you like to do in the future? Ooh, that Ooh. is... Uh... That's juicy. <laughs> um, specific type of project you'd like to do in the future. This was really funny because there was um, at my current office workplace, there was a new person I met and we were kind of like talking about like, oh, what what is the things we want to be able to do like moving forward? And he is such like a big Star Wars fan and a, like a uh, superhero fan. He was talking about like, he wanted to do Star but like that that's his answer not mine um but i think for me ah that's such ooh that is such a good question i think that is stumping me um honestly i've currently i've been doing a lot of like archiving work um okay i have okay i have two things um so i've been doing a lot of archiving work at the office job i'm working at um, archiving tapes. I would definitely love to work on a film that is heavily archi like heavily archives. I think one because like coming back to my roots of like in in VC visual communications that holds you know the largest Asian American archive in the U.S. Like I think it would be great to do something something based around archiving. Um, also because there is I feel like the in terms of editing like there is so much i think right now seeing archival films there is such a big template of like talking heads archives wanting to be able to be creative off of that and not just do the talking heads and archives and figure out what are other ways we can explore archival filmmaking additionally i would love to work on a completely verite film and edit a completely verite film without, you know, any interviews, without any, you know, uh, yeah, which is such a big challenge. Um, but I would love to do a Verite film. Super, I would be super excited, excited to do that. That's, that's awesome. You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see you like work on some like BFX or like I don't know, virtual <laughs> reality, something. Because honestly, oh. you're like our go-to person for any technology-related needs at UFC, for sure. Like, we don't know what's going on. We asked Josen. Josen knows what's up. So, <laughs> thank Definitely you. Definitely the always. IT. Everyone calls me the IT of the group. And I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm thankful. For real. Yeah. Well, when the live went off, I was like, oh, my God, what happened? Josen, what's happening? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, there was one more question from yours truly, Set. Uh, what are your top editing best practices when cutting a scene? This sounds like a master class. Yeah, very. I think like the most, okay, there is one practical one and there's one like really important one. I think firstly, it's so important to watch everything. Like as an, so I think as an editor also, like there was so much disconnect from, you know, the production side of, of filmmaking because like they do all the production and then you get you get shot all this hours, hours long of, of footage. I think like, although it's very helpful to talk to your director and seeing what they like, it is still important to literally start from minute zero to where you're at now and watch all, the, all every, every second of everything that was filmed, even what you think like happened after they cut, where they cut and then they roll for like a minute. Like sometimes that is very helpful. Sometimes, uh, you know, you would be adding those scenes where the director would, would have never thought um, to. Um, a couple more. Um, there is a super cool um, tech I love using, which is a 
I use a gaming pad to be able to edit um, my, it's hard, it's, it's hard to show, um, be able to edit my, my film. So it's like a little gaming pad here. Ooh. And then I can like input macros onto each button. So I don't have to press multiple buttons at once to be, to do specific things. Like it, I think it has been such a lifesaver as an editor to be able to like, you know, click one thing and it'll cut, click one thing, it'll copy instead of pressing, you know, control C and et cetera. And lastly, I think not best practices, but a good advice. And I learned this just recently during the Sundance Art of Editing celebration is that you should stretch every time you edit because you develop, I mean, I have really bad carpal tunnel syndrome, um, <laughs> but yeah, you should stretch your like neck muscles, your your hands, your arms. Um, it'll prevent you from being in pain every day. So stretch. Teach us your ways, Josen. Teach us your ways. That's awesome. I'm super interested in that keyword you showed us. So we have to talk about it later. Yes, yes. <laughs> of course. So smart. Pretty cool. All right. So uh, for the audience and the new people um, who are joining us, who may not know, you know, about your work, how can people mm. best connect with you and your art? Yeah, I mean, specifically that we are in Instagram, feel free to just like tap, tap my face and DM me, feel free to like, chat with me, I'm happy to chat about anything. Um, in my bio also is my website, um, ruj.media. Um, and, and on my website shows more of my film uh, of my photography work and uh, what else is in my website? Photography work and like live event work. Um, I don't have any of my like um, like long form editing reels, but um, feel free to reach out if you want to talk about that. So yeah, come through, y'all. Let's chat. Let's have fun. Awesome. Uh, Manifesting great collaborations, new projects. Woo woo. Sending good vibes your way. So please, folks, connect with Josen. Um, and uh, yeah, let's vibe together. Uh, thank you all for being part of this audience. I know that uh, our time is, is of the, it's running of the essence. So let's see any final comments you may have, any piece of advice you we'll want to give to the audience, um, anything that is in your hearts that you want to share before uh, we um, transition. Um, yeah, I am I'm happy to answer these last two questions in the question oh. bubble. There was one from uh, Paulo Rain Ame, um, the one and only, what is your favorite thing to edit? There was a long time when I was working for um, visual communications where I loved editing alongside music. I think also another thing, like to Dorian's question, I would also love to edit, even though it's not um, documentary, it would be interesting to edit a music video. Um, lastly, um, from Nirav, what keeps you creatively nourished outside of film? That is so good. Um, here's a little, here's a little um, spoiler. It's not that, it's like, it. sometimes it's hard for me to even just like watch films because I have such a short attention span. But if like, I really want to, like I will, I will watch through a film. So like, I think there's so much, I think a lot of my creative life is very much outside of um, film, very much outside of film naturally. I think uh, a bad, a, a thing to know about me too is like, I have a lot of hyper fixations on like specific things. Um, last year, I, I loved collecting plants. Um, as of the moment, my current obsession is um, Magic the Gathering and shout out to my Magic the Gathering friends on chat who I play with every week um, and we play card games. And I think just like, even it's so funny because even sometimes when you build a deck, um, you are creating your own little story with the with the cards and spells you choose. So, yeah, I, I, there is there are so many things I am I am obsessed with, but um, currently it's Magic: The Gathering. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Everybody's like, let's go with the movie nights we used to do back in the day. Yeah, for sure, y'all. Let, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Well, thank you so much, Josen, for sharing 
your knowledge, you know, your artistry, your wisdom, your ways with all of us today. Um, I think we all grew a little more today after this talk. Um, and so we're going to be transitioning out. Uh, please connect with UFC, with the Undocumented Filmmakers Collective. Uh, you can find us here on this channel. We have our link tree. You can connect with us on all social media. Subscribe to our external newsletter to keep up with whatever's going on. And for those of you who are, you know, immigrant filmmakers, um, undocumented filmmakers and artists uh if you are not yet part of our community uh what are you waiting for you can sign up there's a link on our link tree where you can apply and the community organizing team are going to uh be in contact with you soon so please support us and this is something that we're planning on doing every month so uh, keep in touch with us and you'll find out who are the next two people who are going to be highlighted woo, woo, woo. it's a mystery i can't wait uh it's like a season two we're waiting for it so let's binge what binge watch it uh so yeah and shout out to mario for being helping us through Ooh. in this in the in back in the scenes you know and for all our undocumented community and immigrant community and just community in general for being here supporting us on this first live uh and you know we learned something new we have some uh, technical difficulties but for next time around uh we'll we'll learn from that so you <laughs> <laughs> shout out um all right any last comments anything before we thank go thank you Joseph? everyone thank you for all the love everyone really appreciate seeing you all on chat um thank you lady f for for making this happen and mario I'm super thankful of everyone here. Yay. Super exciting, y'all. So this video is going to live on our page if you want to go back and get some more of that wisdom from Josen. So check it out. And uh, yeah, we'll be in touch. All right. Bye, everybody. Take care. Woo. Bye.